Hello all, in this tutorial we are going to design a system which used intra-based synchronization between a peripheral and the processor. So I am going to use the same merge IP that we designed in the previous tutorial as an example. So I will modify my design IP core first in such a way that the IP will generate an interrupt signal once it finishes the merge operation. So I am directly opening uh, the edit project which was generated in the last tutorial okay so this is the source code so at the top I'm going to add one more signal in the topmost file let's call it output uh, INTR to indicate it as an interrupt signal now let me connect it to this lower module and declare it here also. Okay, so we need to decide under what condition our peripheral should interrupt the processor. So as far as our merge IP is concerned, the only condition under which the IP should interrupt the processor is when it has finished the merge operation. We are not taking care of any uh, exception cases or any error cases. So the only condition under which the IP will interrupt the processor is once it finishes the merge operation. So basically this signal should go high once we finish the merge operation. So where can we connect this signal? So you can connect this signal either to the bit zero of status register because we have made the design in such a way that once the done signal comes high, the status register bit zero becomes high. So we can directly connect this signal to the status register bit zero or you can connect this signal directly to the done signal also because done signal becomes high once the merge operation is over. Now we would prefer to connect it to the status register because if you remember the done signal is coming from the state machine that signal goes high which will make the start bit to go low which will eventually make the done signal to go low. Okay, so if you remember the state machine, that is how we wrote the state here. So we are making the done signal high. In the next clock cycle, this will make the start signal low because our control register makes the uh, start signal low once it sees the done signal is high. So that in the subsequent clock, the done signal becomes low. So actually done signals remain high only for two clock cycles. So in many a system, there is a minimum pulse width requirement for the interrupt signal also like interrupt should be high at least for so many clock cycles for the interrupt controller to detect it for the zinc i need to check the value usually like 12 clock cycle one machine cycle it should be high so our done is a quite short pulse so we will not prefer to connect this to the done so instead we will connect it to the uh, status register bit zero because once that bit becomes high it remains high as long as the processor comes and clears it okay so i'm um, assigning this signal you can write wherever you want let's write it here assign interrupt equal to status register is our slave rich one slave rich one of zero okay so once the merge operation is over this will become high which will cause this to become high and it is supposed to eventually interrupt the processor now for the interrupt to go away this for the signal to go low the processor should make this bit equal to zero that we will do from the software so once you have done this much you can go ahead and repackage your ip because you have changed the source code And uh, now in the GUI, you will see it has this intro on the right side because it's an output signal from your IP. And go ahead and repackage. Now I'm going to use this IP in the same Vivado project uh, which I generated 
in the previous tutorial the block design i'm going to use, reuse the same one so let's go ahead and open that project merge test okay you can close this project open the block design and you can see vivado is already saying one of your ip has modified so choose show ip status either from here or go to tools and choose report report ip status and he's basically saying the merge ip it has been modified and you can choose update selected and now you will see the intra line at the output of our ip now you need to connect this intra to the processor now if you take zinc and if you double click it you will see something called gic generic intro controller okay so gic is part of your ps so this is similar to the pic programmable intro controller which i showed in the previous presentation here they are calling it the gic generic intro controller so this is the one who will accept the intro line from the pl and will eventually give it to the processor so this is inside the ps but this is not part of the core processor you will see okay so this gac is actually interface with the arm um, cores from the processor point of view this is also a peripheral so this is also memory map from the processor point of view so that he can read and write from the gac so you double click on gac and you will see by default interrupts are not enabled here so you click it fabric interrupt and now we are doing a pl to ps interrupt so you expand this one and check this option irq f to p 15 down to zero so basically you can connect up to 16 peripherals to this gic which will be eventually connected to the processor okay so these are the irq numbers which will be assigned uh, to these interrupts and what number he is going to assign we will see later so it is written like uh, when you are connecting multiple interrupt msp is assigned the highest interrupt id of 91 so the leftmost one will have 91 uh, rightmost one will have 61 we only have one interrupt line currently so obviously it will be connected to the bit zero here now there are other interrupt signals also these are like uh, dedicated interrupt directly going to the processor as uh, private interrupts and you can see their irq numbers are already pre-assigned so we are not using them we are actually connecting them through the gac okay so choose this option and click ok and uh, now you will see this irq prod uh, comes up here since you have only a single interrupt line we can directly drag and drop it here it will directly get connected now if you have multiple peripherals with interrupt you won't be directly connect them here because here it is like a array it is like a bus and here these are like individual wire so you will have to concatenate these wires into a single bus okay single set of physically they are still wires okay but uh, from block design point of view you can only connect uh, buses of equal width so here it is only one bit wide and here it can be 16 bit wide so you cannot directly drag and drop them so you need to use a special ip called the concatenation ip that is also available from xilinx so that ip will concatenate these multiple interrupt wires to a single bus uh, you can actually search here concatenate concat ip this ip using this you have to aggregate all these interrupt signals together and then connect it here in this case i don't have to do it because i have only a single interrupt line okay so that's it from hardware point of view this is the only design change the major change will be in the software so you save your block design and you can go ahead and generate bit stream but uh, Although we haven't added any new IP and there is no change in the address map, things like that, you still need to export your hardware to SDK now because the IRQ number for this intro is not updated in the X parameters header file. Only if you export it now, he is going to update that file there so that you'll know what is the exact IRQ number assigned for this intro signal. So you need to 
generate output product first. Okay, now you can export hardware. Export hardware. He'll want already there is a HDF file there, but you are all writing it. And you can launch SDK. And parallelly, you can give generate bitstream here. Okay, so this is our previous code and in this code you can see this is the place where we are actually doing the porting. We are keep on checking the status register to check whether the peripheral has finished operation or not. So this is the part we would like to modify and change it into interrupt based. Okay, so first thing, uh, there is a standard way of again writing the interrupt service routine or how will you connect the interrupt controller things like that so the first thing you need to add are the header files which has the driver for the interrupt controller the GAC controller gig so as I mentioned before from the processor point of view gig is also a memory map device so there is a driver for this interrupt controller and this is the driver who is managing the interrupt service routine and the interrupt vector table um, linking between a particular interrupt request line with a particular ISR etc so all these are done by the driver for the GIC so that is stored in the header file here it's called xsug GIC.h okay so this is that header file so this is silinx and GIC is part of something called SEO snoop control unit so that's why it is called like this the header file so first thing uh, let's include this header file so hash include xscugac.h so like uh, any other driver you will be able to see two functions here we have the lookup config function here, which will initialize the configuration. Then you have to use that function in this function, CFG initialize. So these two things together will initialize our intro controller. Okay, so let's take this function and uh, use it in our code. Okay, so remember it is returning a pointer of this type. So of course this is a structure which is declared in the header file like the DMA controller okay so let me first do these things so I need to declare a pointer of this type let me call it uh, intc config and we'll say like intc config equal to config lookup and device id will come from our x parameters so let's search for tick and this is the device id for the gig okay so that is done next one we'll have to call this function And it is returning a 32 bit status. We already have a status here, so we can write status equal to initialize here. I need an instance pointer of this type, so let's declare it and let's call it uh, intc instance. So here we need to pass the pointer, here we need to pass this pointer no my mistake so here we need to pass this one and here the ampersand instance correct here effective address 
so here effective address you can get something like this so instead of base address here they are calling it CPU base address so you need to choose that okay okay so now you can check the status if status not equal to xsd success you can check this function what is the return value it returns xsd success so if it is not equal to xsd success i can print okay interrupt controller initialization failed and when you do a system design maybe if the interrupt controller fail you can go back to the polling mode and do it but here i am just returning i am going to work only if the controller is working fine okay so that part is done now we need to set a few more things so first thing is setting up uh, the priority for our intro now if you go to x parameter and if you search for our merge ip now you will see the base address and all in addition to that you will see one more thing merge interrupt interrupt 61u okay so this is the irq number for the interrupt coming from the merge ip and we'll be repeatedly using it at many places so first thing i am going to set few parameters for this interrupt i'll explain it after i write it okay so x s u g i c set priority trigger type so from the name you can understand what this function will be doing okay so this is the function so this function it takes the gig as a argument it also takes the irq number as another argument then it takes two more things one is the priority for this interrupt and one is the trigger type for the interrupt so details you can read here this trigger it will say basically whether it is a level sensitive or edge sensitive trigger uh, interrupt you can set it and the priority basically says what is the priority of the interrupt so here you can see the priority you can set between 0 to 248 0 has the highest priority and 248 has the lowest priority so as i mentioned before the irq itself has some priority now from software you can modify those priority actually and uh, the priority with the lowest value has the highest priority and the priority number with the highest number has the actual lowest priority so this is uh, important when you have multiple interrupts in your system and the system need to decide which interrupt should be serviced first if two interrupts or two or more interrupts simultaneously happen so in our system it doesn't happen we actually want to configure only the trigger so we are going to configure the trigger as edge sensitive so we are going to use this value binary one one so i'll be giving value three to make it edge sensitive so priority will give some value between that not very low value because maybe there are system interrupts some higher value but the priority will, uh, the sensitivity will set it as rising edge sensitive so first argument is instance pointer so that is our ampersand this one second is the irq number it is 61 but instead of that we copy paste this parameter third one is the priority okay so let's say some priority a0 and sensitivity rising edge the next step is connecting this particular irq number with the particular isr the interrupt service routine that you want to execute when this interrupt happens so let's write the interrupt service routine first then we will connect that interrupt service routine with this particular irq number now what are we supposed to do when we get an interrupt from our 
merge IP. So in this particular case, what we can do is we can just read from the IP and we can just print the merged value. So in the presentation, I said like we don't usually put print statement in the IRQ, but this is a uh, sample case. So this is a simple IP. So here uh, there is nothing else for us to do. We just want to read from it and we just want to display the merge number. Maybe in the later example, we will have more complex example there we will have uh, better IRQ. The return type of an ISR should be a void type because as I mentioned before, these ISRs are not explicitly called from your program. These are system invoke, so they cannot return any value to your program as such. So we declare as void type and we declare these functions as static type also because we want to keep their visibility only within the source code. Okay, so let me call it something like okay, my ISR or let's call it merge ISR. The name really doesn't matter. And ISRs they can take one parameter usually, which will be a pointer to the structure which is representing your hardware. Now, in this particular case, we didn't write a driver for our merge IP. Okay, in the previous case, we just wanted to test it, but remember in the previous examples when we wrote an IP we represented our IP as a structure and when you are writing an ISR you usually pass a pointer to that structure which represents your IP okay so you can do that since I don't have any structure representing that I am keeping it empty there is nothing here now last time we discussed the general structure of an isr so usually first step is disable the corresponding interrupt so that function uh, i will write later so let's just add a comment here disable the corresponding interrupt that we will write later next one we will do we will read the status register to check why this interrupt happened now as far as uh, merge ip is concerned i really don't have to do it because i know the only case under which he will create an interrupt is when the merge operation is completed so, okay so i really don't want to read it to check what it is happening if you prefer uh, you can do it but one thing we will do we will write zero to the status register so that that interrupt signal get reasserted because remember the interrupt signal is connected to bit zero of the status register so if i want to make that signal low i should write zero to the status register so that next time if a merge operation happen i again get an interrupt because again remember we are doing a edge sensitive interrupt triggering that means only if the status changes from zero to one we will get an interrupt so i need to make this signal low so we'll make sill out 32 and this is the base address plus 4 is our status and I write 0 to it so that the interrupt signal becomes low. Next is okay so the interrupt so as I mentioned here only we will read from the IP and just print the result okay so this is what I am going to do. You cannot directly store to CI here because CI is a local variable here. If you want to do something like that, you will have to declare it as a global variable. But as I mentioned before, if you are writing a proper driver, this A, B, C, they will be all part of the structure which represents your IP. So that structure you will be passing here as an argument and you will be able to directly access it through the structure. So let me remove it and I'm just going to read from the ip and print the value there okay because it represents the merge one okay so we service the ip enable the intro back and return okay so we will enable the intro back we will write the function for that later okay so this is my isr intro service routine interrupt service routine for the merge 
interrupt. Now you'll see nowhere in my code I will be calling this function explicitly. Instead, what I am doing is I'm going to link this ISR with this particular IRQ number through the gig. So I will ask the gig, you should invoke this function whenever there's an interrupt on this particular IRQ. So in order to connect this ISR with this IRQ, you need to use this function. It is called xscugic underscore connect. Okay, so this is the function f3 and this is the function so again first argument is a pointer to the kick next one is the irq next one is actually a pointer to your isr okay so here you will pass the address of the isr now remember the name of the function is nothing but a pointer to the function so you will just write the name of the function here and the last argument is again a pointer to the structure which is representing your hardware okay in our case we don't have any uh, if you wrote it in a proper driver way we'll pass that pointer here and our isr when you call the isr this pointer will be passed to your isr automatically by the kick okay so instance pointer ampersand instance interrupt id irq number this one intraf handler okay it should be of type this one so let's just do type casting and give this name even if you don't type cast it's fine i don't have any structure uh, representing my hardware okay so maybe let's just put zero there this function also returns a status and you can check the status whether he successfully connected it or not and I guess that's also XST success yeah so we can do the similar thing interrupt let's say connection failed okay so that much is done now next we need to enable this particular interrupt so this is a function which is used for enabling a particular interrupt it is x s u s c u g i c underscore enable and you need to pass the instance pointer to the gig as well as the irq number so this one and the IRQ number. Okay, so this is the function to enable it. So same way you can assume there will be function to disable it. So let's take this function and use it here also. So first we are supposed to disable it. So we are going to use disable here and we are going to use enable here. Okay. Okay, so disable is also the same two arguments fine okay so this is how we linked our irq with a particular isr with the gig next step is you need to link the gic with the interrupt logic inside the processor okay so this is something extra so previously we just uh, do our driver for the particular ip here in addition to linking your isr with the gic now you need to link the gic with the processor also so this part is pretty much standard so first you can call sil exception init function this function does absolutely nothing this is used for some back compatibility, but let's still keep it there. Next one is till exception register handler function. Okay, and it takes the following parameter: till exception id int till exception handler 
xsu gic underscore drop handler and uh, with star pointer to a instance okay so this is a standard thing this is where you are linking the structure representing your GIC with the processor or with the OS. And finally, you need to do SIL exception in it. So if you have multiple interrupts in your system, this setting priority, connecting interrupt handler and IRQ and enabling that particular interrupt, you have to do it for each interrupt. And finally, you need to link your GIC with the operating system. Okay, so this part remains constant, always. So that's it. So after this, uh, here all remains same. This part, we can comment out okay so this is where we are doing the polling operation so that part you can comment out because we have our isr now now if you just run this code what will happen is your code will come and it will just exit from here okay so as i mentioned before the processor should be doing some other processing so that the interrupt handling will be happening um, in some kind of concurrent way okay so we need to give some other job to the processor so that he doesn't exit from the main function once the processor exits from the main function even if an interrupt comes nothing happens so let's give the processor some other job let me make the processor to print something okay so i am asking him to print off i am working yeah. so let's see what is actually happening so processor sends the numbers for merging he enabled the start signal inside our ip then he is keep on printing this thing and while he is printing this one our merge ip will complete the merge operation and he will rise the intro okay since that particular interrupt is linked with this particular isr our processor he will automatically invoke this function and he will print the merge number and once he finishes this isr he automatically goes back here and continues this printing this is the expected output now let's see what really happens so when i'm saving my code i am getting few errors one thing he's saying like uh, intc instance is now declared that is true because we declared it inside main that means it remains a, a local variable and i am trying to access it uh, in the isr also so usually this instance pointer to the geek we will declare it as a global variable that is one mistake another one maybe we need to declare this function at the beginning before defining it okay so let's declare it and okay so this array we are not using that is true so we can comment it out now you can save and uh, there are no more errors so next we will test it on the hardware so i am initially programming the board from vivado and set up Tarato. And run. I already have run configuration from our previous project. So we can just run it. And he is keep on printing. I'm working. But uh, at the beginning, you can see the processor was actually printing this. He printed I 
and by that time our merge operation is over so the ISR was called so he went to the ISR and he actually read from the IP and printed so this is coming from the ISR this I came from the main function so the so the time taken by the merge IP is just the time required for printing I on the terminal so you can compare the speed between the print operation and the hardware speed actually yeah so he printed I then he went to the ISR he printed this one then he automatically returned back to the main and printed the remaining am working then he is stuck here because I have an infinite while loop okay so I guess you have a broad idea of how to write ISRs and use interrupt in your system so we may have a better example in the future tutorial with uh, more complex ISRs. Thank you.